welcome back uh, in the last few lectures we discussed various uh, decision procedure method uh, methods in the context of propositional logic for instance uh, we first began with the most simplistic kind of method so that is considered to be the truth table method and then uh, we saw that uh, when the num number of uh, variables increases from 2 to 3 or uh, maybe 5 etc and all so the number of entries will also increase the number of rows will also increase then it will be very difficult for us to manage and in that context we discussed about uh, another method which is uh, directly relevant to the truth table method so that is the indirect truth table method and all. instead of checking all the rows for the validity of a given argument we checked only few rows where you have true premises and a false conclusion if you come across that particular kind of thing we said that it is invalid argument and in the in the, in the second method so that is due to semantic tableaux method so this depends upon uh, constructing a counter example so that means if you want to show that a given argument is valid then what you need to do is you have to deny the conclusion and then you need to construct a, a tree based on some kind of tree rules and then uh, when you when you come across uh, uh, a situation where uh, there is some there are some contra contradictions in the branch then the branch closes that means you have established that not x is unsatisfiable that means x has to be valid x has to be true so that is the second method which we have discussed and uh, the third method uh, is uh, the syntactic kind of method so that is uh, due to natural deduction method so where we employed uh, some kind of uh, basic principles of logic such as modus ponens modus tollens constructive dilemma etc and all and then we proved lots of theorems and all and uh, and then we also discussed uh, something about uh, con uh, reducing the given proposition logical formula into its corresponding conjunctive and disjunctive normal form any propositional given uh, propositional logical formula can be reduced to its corresponding conjunctive normal form that is conjunctions of disjunctions or disjunction disjunctive normal form that is disjunctions of conjunctions so uh, once you reduce the given formula into conjunctive and disjunctive normal forms we can talk about the satisfiability and then once you establish that it is unsatisfiable that means not x is unsatisfiable then obviously x has to be valid so today we will be discussing uh, another important and interesting method uh, which is widely used in the context of uh, automated theorem proving in the computer science so that is uh, the name of this uh, method is called as resolution refutation method resolution refutation method so what we will be basically doing is like this so this is a method uh, which works for only uh, those formulas which are in conjunctive normal forms so uh, so it's a, it is it can also be called as a special case of uh, 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 formulating some kind of conjunctive normal forms from a given formula so uh, first we will talk about what we mean by the normal forms which we discussed in greater detail in the last few classes uh, that is conjunctive and disjunctive normal forms are considered to be normal forms and then we will introduce some of the definitions such as literals clauses etc and then we talk about what occupies the central position of uh, this resolution repetition method that is the resolution principle and then uh, once you state this resolution uh, principle then we will talk about uh, constructing some uh, proofs based on the resolution uh, refutation method then we will do some kind of uh, bit of uh, problem solving to to know to uh, to well equip with this particular kind of method so this is also considered to be one of the important decision procedure method as is the case with other decision procedure methods you can talk about uh, whether or not a given well formed formula is a tautology that is the valid uh, whether or not the formula is valid or you can you can talk about when two groups of statements are consistent to each other are satisfiable to each other uh, all these things one can uh, one can uh, come to know with the help of these particular kind of decision procedure method and as is the case with other methods uh, resolution repetition method is also considered to be sound consistent and even um, sound and consistent so this uh, uh, the basic idea is like this uh, it was introduced by uh, John Abraham Robinson in the context of automated theorem proving so when we talk about uh, predicate logic in uh, resolution refutation method in the context of first order logic that is the predicate logic we will uh, we will talk more about uh, 
Abraham Robinson's direct work on resolution repetition method. So, this method has been extended and it used uh, 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 in the computer science uh, widely. You know. so, so, like uh, semantic tableaux method it involves a refutation procedure that means you are trying to construct a counter example. So, uh, this uh, in, in this method it, we, we try to show that a given well formed formula is unsatisfiable. So, in the semantic tableaux method what we did uh, we have denied the conclusion and then we, we have come up with a branch closure that means we have established the unsatisfiability of a uh, an unsatisfiability of a given well formed formula. So, that means the original formula has to be a valid formula in the case of uh, a premises and a conclusion kind of format. So, if you deny the conclusion then the conclusion leads to the branch closure that means uh, not of x is false that means x has to be true. So, this method assumes that a given formula is in the conjunctive normal form. So, all of us know that uh, any given formula can be either expressed in DNF uh, that is the disjunctive normal form or it can also be expressed in, in terms of conjunctive normal form. So, conjunctive normal form is a, a normal form in which only uh, uh, negation and uh, disjunction occurs and conjunction of course, there is no implication and double implication sign which exist in the conjunctive normal forms. So, this uh, conjunctive normal form is conjunctions of disjunctions if uh, each uh, if, if in any uh, any clause that is C 1 C 2 C 1 and C 2 C 3 etcetera where each C 1 is a combination of some disjunctions and all. So, in the disjunctions if uh, formula contains a literal and its negation then obviously, uh, the disjunction is going to be true then if all the disjunctions, the disjunctions are true then obviously, the conjunctive normal form is going to be true and hence it is going to be valid, but here what we will do here is, is that given a formula in the conjunctive normal form. So, uh, we will be applying uh, we will be applying resolution principle which we will be talking about in a while from now and then we will derive some kind of uh, contradiction and all that is empty set you know, empty clause. So, this we will talk in detail in a while from now. So, now this method is based on very few axioms so it, it won't involve uh, as many axioms as in the case of uh, axiomatic method which we will be talking about it uh, in the next few classes but it involves very few axioms and it's mainly dependent on resolution principle so resolution method is used to test as is the case of uh, semantic tableaux method it used to set test unsatisfiability of a set of clauses in the propositional logic so, there are some clauses C 1, C 2, C 3 etcetera and all, all these things uh, combined together will lead to uh, some kind of contradiction. So, the resolution principle basically checks whether the empty class is contained or it is derived within the language S. Yes. So, that is what it uh, checks and all. So, the resolution, resolution method is based on the resolution principle. So, resolution principle is like uh, a kind of uh, modus ponens uh, this is also called as a cut rule. So, what is the uh, modus ponens we have uh, a implies b and you have a and then uh, this a gets detached and all what, what follows is b. So, this is what is modus ponens rule. Uh, there is another rule which uh, which is nothing but uh, it is an instance of uh, modus ponens which is called as uh, cut rule. So, for example, if you have alpha or gamma and uh, uh, not alpha or beta. So, from this uh, you can infer gamma or, or beta. So, what happens here is, is that you have a literal alpha and its negation is there in the second formula. So, these two cancels each other and then what remains is only this things gamma and beta. So, this is uh, another kind of instance of uh, modus ponens rule it is called as cut rule it cuts uh, alpha and not alpha and all alpha and not alpha closes and then uh, it, it will not remain in the final infer conclusion and all 
what remains is gamma or beta. So this rule is called as cut rule. This rule allows us to carry uh, in a, uh, instead of uh, in the case of uh, modus ponens, it will not allow uh, this particular kind of thing A because it gets detached in the modus ponens rule. But one of the advantages of uh, this uh, cut rule, which is used uh, in the resolution principle, is, is that uh, in addition to this one, we can add one more uh, kind of uh, preposition here. So it comes up with uh, some kind of extra preposition in this case gamma. So that is one of the uh, advantages of this cut rule. So now the resolution is restricted version of uh, this particular kind of cut rule in which alpha must be a literal whereas beta and gamma must be formulas. So, so this, uh, this can be any formula and all but alpha that exists here has to be a literal. Now we need to talk about what we mean by a literal, what we mean by a clause and what we mean by a formula etc. And when do you say that a given well formed formula is in the conjunctive normal form. You need to note that this method works only in case of the formulas which are already there in the conjunctive normal form. So now here are some of the important notions before going into the details of this resolution refutation method. So we need these important notions so let us go into the details of these important notions one by one. First important thing is, is that we need to talk about a literal. A literal is a prepositional letter simply it when you express it in the positive way it is P and you express it in the negative way in the negation of that one is not P. Usually in the language of logic what we write it is this thing P and it is complement. So this is same as not P in some textbooks it is written as tilde B P and all. So I am using this particular kind of symbol so it is negation of P. You can also write it as P bar. So now this is what is considered to be a literal. Literal is just like a prepositional variable or prepositional letter P, Q, R, etc. and all, and its complementary is not P or P bar. So P is considered to be a positive literal, and P bar or not P is considered to be a negative literal. So now this is what we mean by a literal. This is what we use in the resolution refutation method. So this is a special instance of the cut rule that we have expressed it in the last slide. Now the second thing which is important in the, in the context of resolution repetition method is a clause. A clause C is considered to be finite set of literals it is a combination of finite set of literals either it can be P or Q or R or it can be P bar or Q bar and R or, or, or it can be of course you can express the same thing as not P or not Q or R. So literals combine together and form a clause. So usually in the case of conjunctive normal forms these clauses will be in the form of disjunctions. So what is a conjunctive normal form? Conjunctive normal form is like this C1, C2, C3 etc. Cn where each C1 is considered to be a disjunction. A3 and A4, A5, A6 just for the sake of understanding we are writing it like this. So this whole thing is considered to be clause. If you take only these the individual letters into consideration uh, they are considered to be literals. So if you express it like this this is a positive thing and negative literal stands for this one or it can be even written as this one not A1 this is the exactly opposite of the literal A1. So this is what we mean by clauses in the case of uh, CNFs it is obvious that C1 and C2, C3 etc all consist of disjunctive, uh, disjunctive literals I mean it consists of disjunctions now. So now here is an important thing which you need to note an empty clause where it does not have any elements and all any literals so that is always considered to be false as it has no true elements. So that is uh, the important thing which one needs to know empty clause is always going to be false because it does not consist of any true elements. So now a formula S 
is considered to be a set of clauses. Now, we, we need to talk about what we mean by a formula. A formula S is a set of clauses C 1, C 2, C n etcetera and all. The whole thing the, con, uh, the conjunction of all these clauses will become a formula. So, that is going to be true as we all of us know a conjunction is going to be true only when all its conjuncts are true. That means, all the uh, disjunctions that exist are uh, are going to be true and all in that case C 1 is true C 2 is true and C n is true. If all of its elements are true and an empty formula which is written as a empty set uh, it does not consist of any clauses is always uh, uh, true and it has no false element and all. So, now there is a minute difference between empty clause and empty formula and all a formula does not consist of anything and all there is always going to be true only because empty set is a subset of all sets and all. So, since it has no false element and all so obviously an empty formula is going to be obviously true, but empty clause is going to be obviously false. So, these are the few things which we need to note. So, now the third thing is is that an assignment A is a consistent set of literals one not containing both P and not P for any propositional letter P. So, suppose if you assign a value to a given formula, so that has to be either to T or F you cannot simultaneously apply both T and both F and all. So, that is what it says it has to be a consistent set of literals. So, now the, the notation that we make use of it in the resolution refutation method is this thing. So, when uh, when a formula A satisfies a particular kind of uh, S a set of formulas uh, especially it is written as uh, A double turn style S yes, if and only if for all C that is for all C belongs to your language S. Yes, and C and A the intersection of C and A is not going to be empty if it is empty then it is going to be false and all. So, as is the case of the second one empty clause is always going to be false. So, you have to ensure that C and intersection of C and A has to be non empty at least one valuation in which the formula is going to be true that is what we mean by satisfiability. So, the valuation induced by A makes every clause in S true. So, that then only the whole formula is going to be true because it is in the conjunctive normal form uh, each C 1 C 2 C 3 all these things have to be true. So, that you know your conjunctive normal form has to be true. So, now a formula is going to be unsatisfiable if there is no assignment A such that uh, the formula is going to be true. So, these are the common things which we uh, all already know. So, one has to ensure that uh, there is no empty clause in all if empty clause is there it is going to be the formula is going to be false, but uh, empty formula is always going to be true. So, now this is the resolution method. So, what are the various steps that are there uh, that, that are the things which we employ in the resolution method. So, what is that we are trying to resolve. So, now consider the two clauses C 1 and C 2 let us say these are the two clauses and first of all you need to note that this applies to only conjunctive normal forms it is only in the context of conjunctive normal forms you can talk about the resolution refutation method. Uh, now, consider the two clauses C 1 and C 2 containing literals L 1 and L 2 respectively and L 1 and L 2 are complementary to each other that means, one letter is L another letter is literal is L bar that is not L uh, these are the two literals that we have. So, we have two clauses C 1 and C 2 and the literals that exist in this C 1 C 2 are like this a literal and its negation is there in the given formula. So, now the resolution procedure is as follows we will be solving some more problems so that you will understand this particular kind of method. So, now the first step that is involved here is is that delete L 1 from C 1 and L 2 from C 2 yielding clauses C 1 prime or C 2 prime. So, then there is the first thing which we need to do first you need to eliminate this literals uh, L 1 and L 2. So, where uh, C 1 consists of a literal L and C 2 consists of a literal not L. So, that is why L and not L leads to F and all. So, that is why it, it will go away annihilation kind of thing and all. So, now 
to form the disjunction of C prime of C1 prime and C2 prime. So now then what you will do is delete if there are any redundant classes like P or P or P etc and all that reduces to only P thus obtaining some kind of final clause C the resulting clause C is called as the resolvent of C1 and C2. So that C is called as the resolvent of C1 and C2. So the clauses C1 and C2 are said to be parent clauses of a resolvent. So let us consider some examples so that you will understand this method in a better way. So the idea here is, is that it is based on the cut rule alpha or gamma not alpha or beta and then you get alpha sorry, gamma or beta. So, so what is that we have done here? So let us consider some examples in P1, P1 or P2 or P3. This is clause C1, and then you have C2, another clause like P1 or P2 or P3. So now these two gets resolved and all the first step that we need to do is to find out a literal and its negation and all. So in this case we have not P2 here and then you have P2 here. So that vanishes and all so now that is the first step that we need to make use of. The first step tells us that delete L1 from C1 the literal literal here is what you need to delete is not P2 here this letter and then in C2 you need to delete its corresponding positive literal that is P2. So now you have deleted that particular kind of thing now in the second step form the disjunction of these two things. So this is consider now it is a changed formula C prime C1 prime or C2 prime. So let us consider that this is C1 and this is considered to be C2. So now the literals got deleted and all now it has become C1 prime and this formula has, has been changed to C2 prime because we deleted the literals. So now you form a disjunction of whatever remains here so that is P1 or P3 or P1 or P3. So that is what happens so obtaining some particular kind of clause C as a resolvent of C1 and C2. So now so this is considered this is the one clause and this is another clause so this goes away and then you form the disjunction whatever remains here is considered to be a disjunction and then whatever remains here P1 or P3 is going to be another disjunction of. So this is C1 and C2 each letter is in the form of so sorry I'm sorry for this. So now what you need to do is in the second step so after removing the literal and its negation you form the disjunction of all these things you know. So that is P1 or P1 or P3 or P1 or P3. So now in the third step since we have P1 exists twice in all here so that is what is the third step delete the redundant, redundant literals from C prime. So what are the redundant literals here P1 is used twice here even if you use thousands of times and all P1 or P2 P3 P1 or P1 or P1 it is always same as P1. So now this reduces to P1 or now P3 is again used twice and all so now it is simply P3. So now this is called as the resolvent of C1 and C2. So these two gets resolved and all and then we will get P1 or P3. So this is what we mean by the resolvent of two clauses 
So, this makes use of uh, this particular kind of rule which is called as cut rule. So, now uh, let us consider some more examples so that uh, you will understand this idea in a better way. So, as the method uh, is very clear uh, in, in one class you have a literal L another clause you have another literal with a negative sign that means if you have P here and you have not P in the other clause and all. So, then what you need to do is you need to delay you need to delete the literals which are positive and negative and all then rest of the things can be grouped together with the help of disjunction that is the second step. So, now after grouping it into in the form of a disjunction then what you need to look for is whether uh, this formula consists of any redundant literals and all like P or P or P etc. If you the same letter occurs twice or thrice and all it is, a, uh, it is same as P 1. So, that reduces to uh, just simply a literal P 1 if P 1 or P 1 or P 1 is same as P 1. So, now the clauses C 1 and C 2 uh, that resultant clause after formulating in this way is called as the resolvent of these two clauses. So, that is what is considered to be the case the same kind of thing can be applied in simplifying digital switching circuits and all provided they are in conjunctive normal form. So, now there are some definitions one needs to follow before going into the examples and all let us talk about some more definitions. So, from clauses C 1 C 2 what are this C 1 or C 2 C 1 consists of some kind of disjunctions and all P 1 or P 2 P 3 etcetera. So, they are of this particular kind of form C 1 consists of a literal L union some kind of form C 1 prime. So, that is the first thing and C 2 consists of it is neg negative literal L bar union C 2 prime. So, now from these two you can infer C 1 prime union C 2 prime which is what we call it as a resolvent of C 1 and C 2. So, we may call C 1 and C 2 as parent and C as the child whatever you get it as an outcome of this C 1 and C 2 is what is the resolvent that is C the child and say that we resolve the literal L in a way we are annihilate uh, this literal gets annihilated now because L and not L leads to F. So, that goes away. So, we resolved on that particular literal L. So, this is what we mean by a resolvent. So, now a resolution deduction process is like this. So, a resolution deduction this also can be considered as a proof as natural deduction. Uh, here, what you are reducing is uh, the resolvent and all. Uh, a resolution deduction or a proof of C given a formula S that means, uh, you got a C from S and all reduce uh, S C from S it is a finite sequence like C 1 C 2 to C n and ultimately leads to C of clauses such that each C i that means, each step in your proof is a member of uh, S or a resolvent of clauses C i and C j. So, there are two resolvents and all then uh, either it should be uh, it should belong to a member of uh, it has to be a member of S that means, it has to be some axiom or some theorem already which is proved in S or it has to be a resolvent. How did we get this resolvent by using this resolution principle that is an instance of cut rule. So, only in this case uh, you call it as that means, you have to obtain all the steps of your proof as a as a result of applying the resolution principle or it has to be already member of S that means, it has to be theorem or some other axiom or something like that. So, the resolution reputation method involves very few very very few axioms and then mostly it depends upon the resolution principle each time you will be applying resolution principle you will be getting the corresponding resolvent and all that adds to that clause adds to another clause will lead to another resolvent etcetera. In that sense this proof is also considered to be an effective proof so because an effective proof is a proof which ends in finite steps in finite intervals of time. So, now a deduction of empty set empty clause from S is called as resolution refutation of S. 
suppose if you have a form uh, clauses C1 and C2 and then you got uh, an empty set so then what you deduced is an empty set so if, if there is such kind of deduction we say that S is considered to be refutable and we simply write it as a contradiction or uh, empty clause is derived from S so that is S singleton style R with respect to resolution repetition we got uh, the contradiction so the empty clause empty clause is always going to be false so now uh, some examples we let us talk about some examples so that we can understand this thing this method in a better way uh, so we have two uh, three two formulas P R and not Q not R so we can conclude P not Q in this particular kind of way so so now let us talk about uh, some formulas and all not Q or R C1 this is a conjunctive normal form and all so now let us say P R Q R R and another one is uh, just for the sake of uh, understanding this thing P R not Q R not R so now so these are the three clauses and all so now we will be applying resolution method on this particular kind of formula so this is considered to be a formula so now each one is considered to be uh, a clause these are considered to be clauses mostly they are all uh, combination of disjunctions and all because it is a conjunctive normal form a conjunctive normal form is a conjunctions of disjunctions each one is a disjunct so now we need to note that resolution uh, method applies only to the conjunctive normal forms that means one has to convert a given formula in propositional logic into the conjunctive normal form then only you can talk about the resolution repetition method okay so now uh, one may use this resolution principle twice or even thrice also depending upon the need so now these two what are the clauses that you have p and you have not p so this gets resolved and all not p so now what remains here these two uh, applying resolution principle in this way leads to not Q or R because we are resolving on P uh, then uh, Q not Q or R R is a disjunction of these things whatever is left in this particular kind of formula so this is the one which we have so now since R occurs twice in all so we need to uh, get away from the uh, redundancies and all so now this formula will become not Q or Q uh, now uh, for example if you if you are trying to resolve this formula and all so now it is uh, so now um, suppose if you are trying to resolve this particular kind of thing then you are resolving again on P only here so then you will get this formula Q R R uh, not Q Q R R or not Q or not R so now uh, original formulas are C1 C2 C3 etc and all and now we are getting its corresponding formulas and all some other uh, letters which we can use and then you can say this particular kind of thing so now uh, you can apply again a resolution principle on these two and then you can say that since you have Q here and not Q here this goes away and then in the same way not Q here and Q here so first time when you apply a resolution principle to this one it will become R since you have not Q also here this also goes away and then what remains here is this thing R Q R R uh, not Q and uh, this becomes these two will resolve into this particular kind of thing uh, R 
R naught Q again you write the disjunction of these things now whatever remains here R R naught Q R naught R disjunction because Q uh, not Q is, uh, is gone and all so whatever is remained is Q so this is what we have R R not Q R not R R Q so now So what is that uh, we are trying to say is this you can apply this resolution method n number of times till you obtain a contradiction in all if you do not get a contradiction now the given formula is going to be true. So now uh, uh, what has happened here so this is not Q or Q and uh, again if you apply resolution principle on this one you will get. Uh, since not Q is here and Q is here it goes away then you will get R R Q or R not R R Q now we can remove the redundancy and all because Q occurs twice here R also occurs twice here so now this will become R R R Q R R Q R not R. So in this disjunction since you have a literal and its negation is already there here so then obviously whether or not whether Q is true or false this, this resolvent is always going to be true. So that means the Q has to be even if it is true or false it does not matter because you already have literal and its negation here so the disjunct is always going to be true that clause is also always going to be true. So in this way one can find out uh, uh, resolvents and all so now let us consider another simple example where how we can apply this particular kind of resolution principle and all. So, so here is an instance uh, it is like this a natural language sentence is uh, given to us so that is if this apple is sweet then it is good to eat obviously sweet apple obviously will like to eat and all eat now the second statement is like this uh, if it is good to eat then I will eat it therefore if this is a, this apple is sweet then I will eat it so there, there are these are the three sentences uh, corresponding to three different formulas and all the clauses. So it is a combination of C1 and C2 and C3 so in an argument uh, all the premises P1 and P2 P3 uh, lead to some kind of conclusion now so, so here uh, the first two are considered to be premises and whatever follows after therefore is considered to be the conclusion. So now we would like to know whether this formula is going to be true or false. So in that case what you will do here is, is that we employ resolution refutation method so what is the resolution refutation method what in that method what you will do is you take the premises as it is and you deny the conclusion you take the negation of the conclusion and if you can derive empty clause then the original conclusion holds and all that means the negation of the conclusion is unsatisfiable then obviously the original conclusion in undeniable form is going to be going to be valid now so now let us consider these two things not a or b so that is the first thing if the apple is sweet then it is good actually that is in this particular kind of format so this is nothing but not a or b by definition it will be not a or b and the second statement is also like this b implies c and now the conclusion is like this uh, if this apple is sweet then I will eat it so that means a if this apple is sweet and I will eat this one. so now the corresponding definitions we can write like this uh, this is each one is considered to be a conjunction uh, c1 and c2 and obviously something leads to so it is not b or c 
and then we have not A or C. So now in the resolution refutation method what we will do is so we will take the combination of this thing not A or B and not B or C and you take the negation of this particular kind of thing and see whether it leads to empty clause or not not A or C you have to deny this conclusion and if this leads to an empty clause then taking the negation of the conclusion leads to unsatisfiability that means the conclusion taking the negation of the conclusion leads to contradiction that means negation of x is unsatisfiable that means if negation of x leads to some kind of empty clause then obviously x has to be valid or x has to be true. So now so given this particular kind of problem we translated it into its corresponding clauses so the first one is translated as not a or b the second one b plus c is translated as this one and the third one is this. So now as a combination of all these things it should lead to unsatisfiability and all because we have taken the negation of the conclusion. So now we need to apply resolution principle uh, on this particular kind of thing. So now uh, so you have to little bit uh, you have to change it and all so this is nothing but uh, a not not a is a and negation of disjunction is conjunction and this will become not c negation of c means negation of c only. So now this is not in a proper disjunctive disjunction and all so somehow you need to use De Morgan's laws and you need to convert it into the corresponding thing. So this is negation of negation of a or c of course this is same as this particular kind of thing. Okay, so now uh, what we will be doing here is this. Thing. So first, you resolve these two things on B. So what are the literals that exist here? You have B here and you have not B here. So these two vanishes and all. And then rest of the things, what you need to do is you need to take the disjunction of whatever remains here. So the literal and its negation goes away, and then whatever is there here is this one. So these two after applying the resolution principle you will get not a or c. So now you have not of not a or c. So now this is exactly opposite to this one if it is x and it is not x and all. So now this leads to empty clause. So now what is that we have derived we derived empty clause by taking the negation of the conclusion that means this is, this is considered to be a resolution refutation method procedure for uh, finding out that uh, denial of the conclusion leads to an empty clause and all. If you do not deny this conclusion it would not have led to this empty clause and all. So it is in that sense in the process of constructing a counter example uh, we have come up with uh, an empty clause so that is why the original conclusion holds and all here. So that is negation of uh, this one. Uh, original conclusion leads to unsatisfiability that is empty clause so that is why x has to be valid or x has to be true what is x here x is this particular kind of thing that means this conclusion follows from the premises and all the explanation of this one is like this you consider not a or b and not b or c if b is true then obviously not b has to be false uh, so b is true substitute in not b and not b will become false and the second clause in particular that is not b or c because not b is already false in order for this statement to be true it depends upon the value of c if the c is also false and all obviously the, the not b or c is going to be false. So that means uh, now uh, that is the case in all c has to be true in that case. So now if you take b as false and all false then obviously not b is going to be true then in the first clause that is not a or b b is already false then the truth value of not a or b depends upon what value not a takes if not a takes 
uh, value f and all the whole disjunct is going to be false that means not e has to be true. So that means only one of the uh, things have to be true so that is either b has to be true or b uh, not b has to be true. So now the explanation for the above is like this if x is true either not e or c is true obviously then not e or c must be true if not e or c is false then x cannot be true so essentially uh, here in this case we cancel b and not b. So now these are some of the examples of a resolvent a resolvent of two clauses let us say c1 and c2 which consists of some disjunctions uh, usually this c1 and c2 consist of at least one literal l and then the other clause you will have exactly the negation of that one it is a literal uh, l bar is there in the other clause then the resolvent is defined in this sense resolvent of c1 c2 is nothing but c1 minus l union c2 minus that negative negative literal so it is like uh, uh, in this case uh, for example so this let us say you have not a or b and not b or c not b or c so now here it is c1 and this is c2 so now what is the resolvent of C1 and C2 they are like this so now it is C1 minus this literal whatever is there here the negative literal not here union C2 this is C2 only minus so now this is B C2 B so now in this sense this will become a simple formula if you remove this b you have a here c1 minus b is a union means here it use it as disjunction union is same as disjunction uh, whereas intersection is same as conjunction so now not b is removed from here then it is c now this is considered to be resolvent of c1 c2 so that is what it essentially says now the resolution principle which is uh, which occupies the central position of your resolution method a resolvent of two clauses c1 c2 is considered to be a logical consequence of c1 and c2 so that means each resolvent of any two clauses is automatically considered to be a logical consequence of this one for example if you take these two into consideration the logical consequence of this one is its corresponding resolvent it is in that sense in your proof each time when you are applying this resolution principle you are coming up with a resolvent and that particular kind of resolvent is considered to be an a logical consequence of uh, these two formulas the c1 and c2 so now uh, one can uh, come up with a better uh, proof with the help of uh, uh, resolution tree proofs and all so this resolution tree proofs looks like this the definition of this one is like this so the same thing which we will be uh, what we will be trying to do is we will put it in a some structural format so then it will it will look like uh, uh, the semantic tableau method but it is not that one but uh, it looks like a tree uh, and then ultimately what uh, you generate is uh, in the tree what you, if you get uh, its contradiction that is empty clause then the original conclusion is unsatisfiable I mean negation of the original conclusion unsatisfiable that means the actual conclusion holds so now resolution tree proofs are like this a resolution tree proof C from S in a label binary tree T is having this particular kind of properties so the root of the tree is labeled as C so that is uh, what we what is that we are trying to deduce in all the root and your branches in all. So in the semantic tableaux method, what we have is the given formula uh, occupies the root, but it, we have considered the upside down kind of tree, where the root is uh, there in the upstate, uh, upside it occupies the upside position, whereas uh, the other formulas which uh, it, you come across are there in the nodes in all. 
So now the root of the tree is going to be your clauses and all whatever clauses that you have taken into consideration and the resolvent is considered to be its logical consequence its corresponding nodes etc it is like its branches. So now the leaves of T are labeled with elements of S and if any non leaf node sigma is labeled uh, labeled with C2 and its immediate successors are labeled as uh, any other letter other than uh, sigma 0 success, sigma 0 and sigma 1 are labeled with C0 and C1 etc then C2 is considered to be a resolvent of C0 and C1 so C has a resolution tree proof from S if and only if there is a resolution deduction from resolution deduction of C from S so now let us consider some kind of a resolution tree proofs and all. So now here is the case and all. So just I will draw one simple. I'll prove some. I will provide a simple proof, resolution tree proof for a given problem. So that is, we have these formulas P and R and Q R so these are the clauses that we have when I write P comma R that means P and R when I write Q uh, comma R that is Q and R uh, then not P uh, T and then you have S not T uh, so now we have another kind of formula which is not S and all not S is so now, uh, so these two. So now, what occupies the uh, root root uh, kind of uh, what occupies the root here? So that is the clauses that we have. Different types of clauses: C1, C2, C3, C4, etc. So now, these two. I think uh, it should be written uh, in this way: P, R. You are something like that. Okay, leave it like this. P. So now these two in resolution, you will get. P R and Q not R, for example. So now these two, after resolution, you will get this clause P Q. And you already have a clause. Of course, these are all the things which are already there here. First formula is P R R, the second Q R not R, not P T, S R not T, not S, and even not Q is also there. And these two, the resolution, you will get Q and not Q is here. So what you will get is P. So now observe these two things: not P T here and S and not T here. So these two, the resolution, you will get not P R C not P R S. So now you have not S here and not P here these two after resolution you will get not P. So now this P and not P leads to you can call it as box or sometimes you write it as this particular kind of symbol. So this, this is called as a contradiction in all. So, so this will serve as some kind of resolution refutation proof for a given formula and all for example if you take this 1 2 3 4 maybe 5 and then you have taken into consideration not s as your conclusion and all actual conclusion is yes and all yes but you have taken into consideration not s so now after applying resolution principle 2 3 twice thrice etc and all and then if you take uh, this not uh, not s into consideration that the end of the conclusion and that leads to contradiction now so that means in this case maybe s is going to be your conclusion so the denial of uh, the conclusion leads to uh, some kind of uh, empty clause so in this way one can uh, find out uh, a proof for a given kind of formula for example if you are asked to show that uh, a given formula is uh, uh, given uh, argument is valid etc and what you do is you deny the conclusion 
and if and you construct uh, uh, using the resolution principle and you will form you will formulate uh, uh, you will come up with a contradiction that is the empty clause in that case I mean the inner of the conclusion leads to unsatisfiability that means the actual conclusion holds. So in this uh, class we discussed about uh, resolution repetition method so where uh, it applies to only uh, conjunctive normal forms so whenever you have two conjuncts C1 C2 and these two gets resolved into uh, another uh, kind of uh, conjunct uh, especially uh, when you have a literal and its negation is there in the other clause and all. So now uh, it has its own uh, uh, this method has its own advantages uh, that is uh, resolution method is considered to be sound that is if there is a resolution repetition of S then S is considered to be we are saying effectively that a given S is considered to be unsatisfiable and all and its corresponding lemma is, is that if the formula S is a combination of C1 and C2 that is satisfiable and C is a resolvent of uh, these two clauses then obviously C is also considered to be satisfiable. So and this uh, resolution repetition method is also considered to be complete that is if, if you can somehow show that S is considered to be unsatisfiable then obviously there is a resolution repetition of, of S. So like any other deduction uh, proce uh, decision procedure methods this resolution repetition method is also considered to be uh, consistent sound uh, uh, etc. So now uh, we will be talking more about this uh, particular kind of resolution repetition method in the context of predicate logic there we will talk about uh, this particular kind of method in greater detail.